You're gonna have the best hair on this show, Andrew. Not George, not Adrian, you. About Effing Time, the number one watch podcast listened to down at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And if you don't believe me, prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So yeah. I'm Adrian. This is George. You this put, is Andrew. You put a huge amount into that intro, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's I'm, almost I'm, like you want to walk away from the episode. I'm done. I'm, 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 <laughs> Boom, I'm, I'm out. I'm I pronounce Mariana. Have a good I'm day. Good. Boom, exactly. I'm out. Guys, what's, what's been going on? What's been going on? I've got a bit of a story and a question for you. So I walked the last little bit of the, the commute this morning to the Hive in Mayfair. And I walked past this pole outside the office. <laughs> no and way. given that we've been handling a Batman throughout this season, I wanted to ask if that had anything to do with you, yeah, George. George Manford, is, is, is that the, have you stolen someone's watch? <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got to, watch no. theft is bad in London yeah. right now. We might have the culprit. Um, no, but this is, you will see, um, there's billboards going around London at the moment, don't wear a nice watch. Yeah. There's, all, that, of, yeah. there's all of these things that are happening. People are saying they've lost a watch or they've died. Yeah. Honestly, this for me is something... Are you saying that could be actually disingenuous? As well, in someone this saying... Is, dollar, dollar, you know, pound, pound, pound for returns. It's, it could be, could be, I'm not saying anything, but yeah. it was lost on Monday. It could have been, you know, stolen. so don't excuse, mm. don't say to someone they've stolen it, say yeah. it was lost. Yeah. So it could uh, be a better way around it. I, I, that's what I see, see by this, because I've seen quite a few. You found my watch thug that beat me in the face and took it. Yeah. So, and I will pay to get it back because yeah, of the, sentimental. because of sentimental uh, value. Stand. That's what I take from this. I take something sinister from this, not yeah. something. I see the darkness because I see the billboards. I see the things that are happening. Mm -hmm. you, everyone's watched that Bugatti being smashed into. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. You know. Some horror show you know it's ripped off the hand and, and videos. you know and i've i've even can we stop posting those instagram do we need to keep torturing no but yeah, you know, but, it's, the, it's, but this it's... is happening around around the world new york's got a pr issue um there is other places that have got issues so it's yeah. not only i'd love to say it's uk but there is yeah. watches being stolen even in switzerland can i say you talk about darkness we'll get onto a wrist check in just a second but you talk about darkness the real darkness of that billboard being dragged around london is that it's bloody sponsored it's an ad for a secondary um, a secondary seller who's saying what? watch theft don't wear your watch if you do this this and this and at the bottom it says sell your watches now at XXX oh no, no way I, 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 do you know it's I hate, not dragged I around hate, by the police it was I, complete I assume that was a police safety I, I'm notice so, I know I, I'm that so, is fucked up okay so that's dark that is dark because that's but that's also that thing of like you know in America when you get the advert comes on and it's the the drug and you kind of think hey yeah. and then it goes all of the symptoms afterwards you're just like <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to yeah. touch that drug in my fucking life yeah I um, thought you were going to say it's a fear god type of evangelical late night ad where they say have you been sinning because we got you know come and join this church and give us all your money now it's the same kind of fear mongering because this billboard is making everyone feel afraid about having watches and then it says oh by the way if you'd like to offload them for a cheap price we're here for you so it's messed okay, up yeah, I, yeah, I, that, didn't, that, that, I did that, not that know that weird. that's that's, that's um, okay well look that's from so something that oh, was no. kind of a uh, you're wanting to take, just want to you wanted it. to take the piss out of me yeah. because you were like did you steal it to <laughs> yeah. actually talking about something that's dark and anyway we're we're on to something else. George, yeah. what's on the rest? God. Now, I know this oh, probably sounds... Monza. Monza. Old school oh. Monza. Uh, it should be on... Marcus a... has just got an arousal Look, situation. Honestly, <laughs> this should be on a, a, a Bark and Jack strap, but oh, it's not. 
Um, but I love the red ticking that matches that. I, I just think this inside outside. Monza, I think, is a very cool watch. I, I've had this for years and I, wow. I didn't fall in. I, George. I, I only recently I saw it on a friend of mine's Instagram and I thought, fuck, I'm going to pull that back out yeah, and cool. wear it again. And I've been wearing this quite a bit and I love it because I love mm, the patina. So I love the whole thing. Creamy. And it's just a very cool combo. What, what is the case? It looks a bit. Br is that brown? Is it like a, a bronze underneath there? Uh, it'd probably be brass. Brass, that's what, that's what I meant, not bronze. So that also makes me think the reissue of the Monza was pretty awesome because it was a, definitely a modernised version and deep, deeper, di know, deeper dial, but, geez, that's nice. Honest, honestly, I, I love the Monza and it's something that I am begging Tag Heuer constantly. Uh, well, Marcus, you can start playing the uh, Careless Whisper music now because this is this is the <laughs> oh Time and Tide, the Time and Tide, Time and Tide band. Uh, oh, it's my mine and ours. Okay, this is the how this we first they, met. I'm this is why the Careless guys. Whisper. Yeah, we need so. to get on the Buck and Jack Nature Street. And actually, look at this. Look at the look at this dark grey. And I also steel love case. that you're actually, wearing it as really well. Good. And and look and, how fucked up it is. I yeah. wear it a lot. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. But so the bicolor uh, internal rotating bezel with the cool band vibe. <laughs> we mixed up our colors. It is a little bit like a baby, isn't it? Yeah. Is that coming through? Ooh, what's that? Bitch, don't kill my vibe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was signed by George because <laughs> I asked him to uh, engrave something. I've, I've got a business card that says that. All, th um, all through our, all through, I was going to say our negotiation, our discussion about this watch and our planning. As soon as it got to anything to do with money or boring stuff, he'd just hold up a card. It was just like, bitch, don't steal my vibe. Don't tell my accountant that. Part of the joy. So, you know, when you're scrolling through Instagram and, and you come across watch, you think, oh, shit, that is just I want really that. cool. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. So there was a, a Seiko 5 that isn't available um, over here that's only available in the Middle East. And I, I was talking just, I can't remember, just on a YouTube video that there's a, um, an Arabic script Seiko Ooh. 5. That is gorgeous. And uh, luckily... What's wrong with that? A viewer in the Middle East sent this to me, but the dial was in a different watch. I didn't like that case. I already had the Seiko 5, so I popped off the back, removed the movement, removed the dial, popped it in this case, and it's just... I think you do that a lot. This is something I've learned about you in this season. You are quite a little watch fiddler, aren't you? You're, watch you're, fiddler, yeah. you're, you're, you're a watch hacker. That sounds. That sounds the fiddler on the roof. <laughs> or you're, you're, you're doing the Frank, Frankensteins. This is 100% yeah. a Frankenstein, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I Works it. in that case. I, I, I love it, yeah. The, the, the case is, is more... Traditional, um, and it's. I, I just love the dial. I, we should definitely um, do an episode one day about Seiko mods because that is oh, a yes. little like oh, yeah. a yes. little community yes. so, that just. Um, sorry, tell, tell me where the stra straps from. This is a Bark and Jack. This is a seatbelt known on NATO 2.0 Bark and Jack nest strap. Thanks yeah. so much, guys. Boom. Boom. Lovely. Boom. Killer. Right, guys. Killer. killer. Let's get down to business. 100% killer. killer. It is about effing time. We talk about overrated watches and underrated watches. Let's get into it. So the plan is, we have two watches each. Two overrated, two underrated, and we discuss because we don't always agree. Mm -hmm. let's, let's have a shot down. All right, cool. Oh, that looks cool. That, this, this looks Casey Neistat style. There we go. I like that. Let's get some stickers about. <sighs> Do you want to explain the rules? Yes. Yeah, explain okay. the rules. Yeah. So the rules are we have two watches for each category, overrated and underrated. We put forward, we put forward those suggestions and then we have to back them up with an argument as to why we think they're overrated and underrated. I've picked up your intonation of duh, 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 duh. Do I do duh, that? Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. I don't even know. And I now do that. I'm fucking doing it myself. I like the way you do it. That's because I'm talking like you. No, I like the way you do it normally. Oh, on your right. fucking videos, where you sound like you're being interrupted by someone by the side. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we put our choices down, for example, in overrated, if the other two disagree, then it gets shifted down the board or up the board. Uh, and that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Sweet. Andrew, you're writing. Yep, I'm writing. You said you've Andrew's got the writing. best handwriting. Um, so, five, it. eight... 11. Oh, okay. straight in with a big one. I, is this, where is this Overrated. going, George? Okay. Oh, I'm so pleased you did that. Cool. Overrated. Thank you. here to fuck spiders. Yep. Or Nautilus. Make your case, sir. Make my case. Um, well, you already said it. Hmm. Larger case. <laughs> so, uh, honestly, what the... You know, 
It's just like, put a bow around it. You know you can sell it. I'm like, I, I feel sorry for the design people at uh, Patek when, when they're told, hey, let's just do... Oh, let's make it a bit bigger. It, it, I, I can I, imagine they feel like caged animals I, you when know, they say, "This is your project, right, guys? We're gonna we're gonna do a new Red, version of the Lord yeah. Nautilus. Put forward your ideas. Everyone puts forward. The, no, no, no. Let's let's one millimeter. That's all. But no, but for me, they it's did, the same. This is, maybe it's a submariner development team. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this but is this is shifting them. Same. No, no, but that's what that's that's what. Look, I can say to you, yes, that. But I would have. If you brought that out, I would have brought something else alongside it. Like what would you have done, Mr. Designer? No, for me, I would have brought out... What they did was the lab, the experimental ones that I really loved. Yeah. And I would have done this, and then I would have done a Big Daddy that would have been the 5, 8, 11 Big Daddy concepty with some type of uh, horological concept about yes. it. Yeah. That, for me, would have been the clever way of doing it, because then it would have, it would have said... People that have missed out on the 5711, you can wait for four years for the 5811 or 20 years, whatever you're going to wait for. But I think it's overrated because I think that it is... 5711 got cancelled for two years, was it? Roughly? They said, hey, it's, hey, we're not making it for two years. Mm -hmm. And then they brought out the Tiffany that I thought was a genius blow oh, yes. because I thought that and was kind of... Yeah. And then, then there was other... And, and I kind of then went, well, five the next one mm -hmm. and it doesn't roll off the tongue very easily 5711 does 5811 doesn't yeah. as well but i just go to myself and go there's nothing big about it apart from the size i and absolutely agree that they, they should have had some sort of hero product or no sorry that this is a hero product have something sexy and exciting something and a, different. a talking piece to go alongside it's a little it bit like the finissimo it launched with a, a tourbillon in an exotic material yeah. and and again you say wow look at that look how slim that is and then of course they always had the plan that it, it joins a more you know it and becomes a core collection. Yeah. And you yeah. think yeah. about the argument this came out in white gold mm. Well, a lot of people went, oh, you know, it should it should be in steel. Well, that's bullshit anyway, because, you know, the original one on Gerard Janta's wrist is done in white gold. So they used to do a lot of the things in that way. But why couldn't they have done one in titanium or something mm -hmm. else that was new? Yep. I'm, I'm just like, I, I, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm kind of feeling like I'm carrying on talking about this and I'm going to sleep. Yep. Yeah, cool. So Let's I, move on then. Move on. Yep. What, what's your next option? We, we all agree. So I've been talking about this brand a lot. And we, we, no, fuck off. I've been talking about this brand quite a bit because I think that they are absolutely amazing, but I just don't understand. I still can't understand the full value. Mm -hmm. And that's Richard Mill. Okay. Uh, and for me, when I look at it as a brand, just saying overrated as a brand because... Mm -hmm. I, I think the flex on everyone's wrist about a Richard Mill, I think is is one of those things. I th I think it is. It's I, I I like the brand. So this is the thing is I'm I'm torn on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, because you've you've been very positive. About and it. I like the brand, but I put it as an overrated because I think that it is one of those things that when someone hears that I'm in the watch world, they go, oh, look at my Richard Mill. And I think Richard Mill have been genius, absolutely genius. At, through their integration with celebrity yeah. and with, with, with wealth and luxurious lifestyles. I think they've really done a great it, job at, at, at providing a dream. So I think they're rated. I would argue that they're well rated for what they are in terms of, you know, it's $100,000 watch. Look, I still want one. So yeah. it's, no, it's not, when I put it over. I feel like you're torn. I, that, that's I'm, what I mean is yeah. I feel like it, it's here. It's kind of like go, so, I'm going, because yeah. there's certain people I freaking love having uh, a really Richard Mill. And I want one. Something's triggered in you. But... I'm kind of like, it can't be here, but it can't... Uh, and no. I'm kind of, it's here, but I don't know... So what happens if I agree with George? It stays. OK. So w what you're describing about Richard Mill is that, that you like what they're doing, you agree with what they're doing... There's, and, and then you watch... But, but, but this is exactly why I get annoyed with Rolex. I, Rolex legitimately make a brilliant watch. I hate the popularity of it. Yeah. Uh, and and how people in the watch world are so fucking bored of Rolex because everyone talks about it. And and that I'm getting similar vibes with, with Richard Mill. So I, I think for the reasons that you've stated, I agree that they're overrated. See, for from, me, from, from a horological I, point of view... Can we move it halfway between the two for the moment? No, I think they're absolute categories. I really think so. Okay, so I, I'm, gonna, go. I'm about to become very, very unpopular. Didn't you say you've got good writing? Would you like to have a try? No, because I'm on shit. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> I'm, I'm the best of a bad bunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's true. Prepare for... 
A very unpopular opinion. I think the Pelagos is overrated, and I'll tell you why. Because it is... <laughs> You're pursing your lips together. He's just like <laughs> squeezing his lips together. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have an issue because I'm going to throw both of mine out at the same time. And they're both the same brand. And I, I'm sorry for that because I've given this brand a lot of love over the years. These are oh, two yeah. watches I cannot stand. E excluding the 39 mil. And my issue with the Pelagos is not the, the value offering. And I'm saying this to you, Pelagos owners, who now hate Andrew from about a thing time and time and time. Hear me out. I have a problem purely with the, with the aesthetics. Oh man, it's late in the day. The actual package itself in terms of the, the, like whenever there's a comparison with a, I think you've probably done several videos about this. Sub versus Pelagos, Pelagos wins, Pelagos wins, that. Pelagos wins. Everyone's done that. Because when you actually look at it as the sum of its parts, of course it wins. It's a better price. The build quality is fantastic, and really, there's there's a snowflake hand. There's a few touches that make mm -hmm. it unique. However, I just find that the bigger size, the, the traditional size of the Pelagos, not the 39, just looks so boyish. And it's and they look. I've obviously got some sort of idea about masculinity and refinement that just prohibits me from liking watches that look like their Boy Scout watches and That's boy watches. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, look. Um, George is about to tee off. No. And when I see a man on the train wearing a suit and then a, a blue Pelagos with this huge snowflake hand, I just think, one day you'll be a man. One day you'll grow up. You know, I, I, I really That's have an issue with that. And then I see the ranger on a grown ass man. And I have exactly the same reaction. So of, you, you've you know, got this masculinity barometer that's, that's bouncing back well, and also forth. Not just about masculinity in terms of it being a some sort of abstract concept of like man and child, but it's more to do with the the, the way that you grow up and you you become more refined. You you, be, you your lines go from chunky and mm -hmm. and sort of blocky to smoother. And I mean, uh, the aesthetics to me reflect childish aesthetics. When a kid draws something, it's in big blocks. It's like here is you know that they, they don't have the ability to to draw. And I think that this is a big compliment to, in this case, the Submariner, and in this case, the uh, Explorer. I think they are both much more refined versions of what these big blocky childlike watches are. And when I see them on, especially, okay, is this saying something? No, no, like no, 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 no. I think it's you're amazing. Me. Can we get that on record? <laughs> sure, I no, love I, you. It's just for you to write the L thing because you've fucked up one of our business cards. Okay. okay. Oh my God, I have These to. business cards are so for that, sale. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so look, you're, you're eating into the profit of the writing business. Into, writing on Ch money. Tudor gets so much love. And of course, you know, we've talked endlessly about how great the 58 is, how great the the Black Bay is in general, and the new Pelagos, the 39, the reason that doesn't fall into this category for me is that the dimensions bring that hand back into line, and I find that the dimensions of the watch aren't so childlike, but I really dislike the aesthetics of these watches for um, anyone that is over the age of 18. I have to move. I personally feel that the Pelagos is underrated. I feel like... Underrated is over here, man. Uh, but, uh, okay, I thought... What are you going to say? That? I thought it even... Because... I feel the Black Bay 58 is so close to the Submariner that it gets the love. I feel like the Pelagos is, is actually a standalone watch in a similar way to the Seamaster isn't a Submariner. The Pelagos isn't a, a Submariner either. The, I, it's interesting how you attribute the blockiness to um, l l like an oversized uh, truck. Yeah, that a guy's Tonka drunk. truck that's a like Tonka this. trucks. It's yeah. interesting that you've you've made that that connection, and and I can see why you see that. For me, I see it as an out and out tool watch, and every aspect of it has been designed to be to serve a purpose. It just so happens that that purpose requires it to be a blocky thing. I think it is a superb watch. It's a watch that I would buy if Tudor fixes the color differential between the dial and the bezel. That pisses me off. Okay, George, where, what do you think? Definite. This this one. Do you know when that for me is just a that's a no brainer. I, I you know I think it is overrated. I feel like I wanted to write a not rated because I wanted to actually just have a have a place where we just put them into the sim bin and they're out. You know they're not wow. they're not overrated or underrated. No, it's not sim bin. It's just no they, no no no. no. I, I love it. It's a great. Category. They shouldn't feature because. This, for me, you know, is Davide's uh, original kind of designs when he went into a Tudor and did some of the things that he's done, pulling back forward. 
I love this. I think when it first came out, everyone went, yes. Mm. I th sure, when you first saw it, you were like, actually, this is a good watch. The more you've seen it, the more you kind of keep on going about this kind of like 18 year old and come and be, be a grown up. Honestly, I, I, I mean, I, I, I wear a watch with a Snoopy on. So, you know, I can't judge on someone being a grown-up or not a grown-up because, honestly, I wear and something and I. it makes it's, me smile. It's this, just... for me, I think is a very clever watch because what it's done is it's given me an alternative. It's given people an alternative. Yeah. And the thing is, the blue, I actually think it's very cool. I do agree okay. with you about matching. I do agree with you. There's some things that kind of bug me, but I, I do agree. When that came out, I didn't go, oh, my God, I want that. When that came out, I went, yeah. I and I and I don't. I had it for a period of time, and then it went um, onto a uh, secondhand website because. So it, that's interesting. And I liked it, but I don't know if but, it's. So you I like don't, it. So let's put this in context. He likes it, but he doesn't like it enough to keep it. Yes, but you know why? Because there is that thing of want, you know, and love, and really love the watch, and some watches. Like so when shouldn't it be rated then given it gets so much love like this is the most true. Yeah. Yes, 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 upon yes, 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 yeah. yes, 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 And so I would actually really need say, another video. No, saying, no, no, don't you dare. Put, I, I, don't I, you move that. I, well, well, you, you've outvoted well, it's not me anyway. even actually overrated. Like, it, I, but it's I, I, still I would get, say it gets like when it came out again, there's all it's a hype about what a perfect watch. That, I, that, I, that for me, I could just pick off here and throw away. I think like this could be labeled as new Tudor hype is overrated. Yeah, as in as soon as a new Tudor is launched. Everyone's happy. Okay, I'm f my brain's just drawing blank. The Tudor, the way you popped with the bezel that you could turn and you popped the bottom bit and you clicked and the bezel, I can't... Oh, the P0. So one. for me... I actually kind of like the that. The P0. No, 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 so, so when I look at it, th uh, that should be here. If yes. I look at Tudors, yeah. that's here because yeah, it's yeah. batshit crazy. Yeah. And that oh, for me is... So, Are so, we filming, filming still? Yeah. yeah, that that's that's what I'm, and I'm sorry I forgot that because I can't remember names at the moment. But but that should not fucking sit there. It and that should be just off. But if you would brought, you know, a, and I hope you bring something like that for underrated because that's also, yeah. also coming back to your idea about the Nautilus just being a fifty-eight eleven. Tudor was clever in launching that because it was it was kind of adjacent to the 58 Black Bay range saying, it's still a vintage diver. It's just some weird fucking yeah. crazy thing. You're probably not going to like it, but we're going to do it anyway. And it's, I, I thought it was And it a supports cleanser. the collectors. Yes. You know, and yeah. that's the thing is you've got to, you've got to tantalize the collectors in another way. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a great thing. I think you, you, sorry, I've jumped on you about the range. Agent. No, that's okay. Okay. Right. So first one is going to upset some people. To More be clear, than the Pelagos, I, doubt. I, I love this watch. However, I think the Omega Aquaterra is overrated in the eyes of Omega. So That's Omega... Ooh, twist. okay. So Omega want 5,000... Is it 4,500? 5, pounds for an Omega Aquaterra. For an Omega Seamaster 300 Professional with the bracelet extension, with the ceramic rotating bezel, with the helium escape valve, with the, the deeper depth rating, they want 5,200 pounds. Yeah. Where's Which the fucking logic in that? Or 4,800 exactly. for my green one yesterday. Exactly the same logic. Mm. <clears throat> it, 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 it makes no sense. And so I, I feel, I love the Aquatera. It's actually one of my favorite watches of all time, the Aquatera range. Do you know what millimeter. changed me entirely? Because I've always thought the Aquatera was not as successful as the Oyster Perpetual collection for Rolex, as in a boring, plain, yeah. but obviously lovely and lovely to have watch that you know doesn't rustle, ruffle any feathers. However, what you said about the Aquaterra in relation to Bond and how it worked so well in his character in the movie, it completely changed the way I think about it. So now it's sort of back on for me, but I wasn't as close to it to know the price differential. But that, that's hard to explain. It is hard to explain. And if you think about um, the fact that the, the uh, Oyster Perpetual, the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, is pretty much the same money. And we have, well, in my eyes, Rolex sits above. It, Rolex is pure in-house. Omega is part of a, a group. It's, it's a, a commercial offering. It, it isn't the same thing. And I, I love the Aquaterra. And Omega needs to calm down on the pricing. Not it's. <laughs> It, it is disproportionately more expensive than the Seamaster. It's disproportionately more expensive than 
it's peers. It is unnecessary. It's a superb watch. It isn't a £5,400 watch. So what you've raised is a question about value. I'm sorry to interrupt the episode. <laughs> oh, you dig. <laughs> Adrian, you got something to say? Bezel. So Bezel have kindly sponsored this episode. I've worked with them in the past on my own channel. But here, Bezel, if you might not be aware of Bezel, they're a new platform over in the US. They are now global through their website, shop.getbezel.com. But their big USP is their iOS, their iPhone app which you can just search for get bezel the thing that is different about bezel than other watch leaders is there's quite a few points the big thing is their whole experience they have a community they have on hand watch experts who can advise you on the watches that you want to get you might have a watch in mind but you're not too sure if that is the absolute watch you want to get they can help you out with it i've got to point out one thing please we did a we did a quick survey of of the the most popular watches and categories. The most popular watches on Bezel are a Patek Philippe Calatrava, mm -hmm. a, an Omega Speedmaster, and a Rolex Badejust. So if that sounds like the kind of watches you like, like everybody, then that's, <laughs> that's, that's the place you need to be. Game the other on. thing is their certification. This is something they even sniff. They sniff the papers. They yeah. sniff the you papers. You wish they'd sniffed your papers because you <laughs> needed them in your I, life. I, look, I, I've needed them in my life for a while. Um, Thank you so much. Now back to the episode. One more well, thing. Not only are Bezel helping us out by sponsoring us, but they're helping you as well. Use discount code Effing time 250 all is one word, all is capitals, and they will get you $250 off your first purchase. Now back to the episode. <laughs> cool. So what you really pointed out there is that the, it's not so much that the watch is overrated, because I'm, I'm shocked that you said that's overrated, because to me, the Aquaterra is squarely uh, rated. The, the watch itself on its own as a standalone unit yes. is underrated. I think probably I think it's fucking incredible. incredible. But in terms of the how Amiga rate it and how they actually fancy its pricing position mm -hmm. is off. Yeah. So absolutely. tell me, <laughs> so, do you have anything else? You've got a second overrated watch to do. I have, from, yes, that I have indeed. The Daytona. <laughs> <laughs> so the Daytona. It, I'm frustrated about the Daytona because I understand its sexiness. However, I feel the love for it is disproportionate for, similar to the Nautilus. It's a beautiful watch, but I feel the love for it is disproportionate. The thing, though, that pisses me off the most about the Daytona is the majority of people who I see wearing a Daytona, it still has the stickers on it. Coming back to your point, so my, my idea around... I, I like buying watches for different reasons. If I'm going to wear a watch, I'm going to fucking wear that watch. The stickers are off. I don't care. I, I like the scratches on my watch. I had my Explorer polished once and I hated it. I, I nearly sold it after polishing it because I thought this, it's not my watch anymore. So the thing that annoys me most about the Daytona, even more so than the, the disproportionate amount of love that it gets, is the fact that people aren't enjoying them. People are buying these watches as investments, which I understand. You can, but no, just fucking wear it, enjoy it, take the stickers off. The thing that bugs me about that Daytona, it was, it was around forever. And look, it started as a difficult watch to sell. It started as a you know, commercial failure. And it, and it didn't ever really, really peak until the ceramic models came out, in my opinion, and in my memory. I, I might be wrong, but to me, it seemed that when the ceramic models came out, suddenly this watch was on fire. So a lot of the iterations people are buying... I think 90, are the watches 95, that, 96, 97, the Italians started buying into the, the early pre-Daytonas pre and then it was then into the Paul Newmans and through that. I, I think... But still Daytonas was still... I remember the that knockdown. was still about 12 grand. Yeah, you know? but, but, that, grand but that was a lot of money. You know, when, I, when you're looking at some of these things with the Zenith movement, the 6.9 dial, there's there a few things when you looked at those prices. I, 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 I agree with you on that. I'm slightly a bit on the fence on this. But I, I, the thing on this, I, I'm just like... I, it's so good to see it on someone's wrist to, to a degree, mm -hmm. but you see it on someone's wrist and you've gone, I've seen X amount of them in my life. All of us have seen on social or on anything that what I love is when you look at someone's Instagram account, when they put up a photograph of this watch, the likes are about 40. Mm. Well, on, everyone's yeah. bitter on it. Everyone's oh, yeah, sour. Yeah, every, every, everyone's done. The one thing I'll say in the defense of the Daytona that we've sort of come upon through our discussion about this watch whenever it comes up, and especially in the uh, episode where we talked about alternatives, mm -hmm. is that it doesn't have an alternative, really, in terms of a slim, yes. automatic yeah. chronograph. And it's obviously a, a fantastic achievement, technically, for it to be that slim. Oh, what's this? I, I completely agree. 
the, 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 in that and, sense, in, in, in some sense, it's actually underrated because people yeah. don't appreciate how brilliant the movement is. And actually for the price at retail, yeah. it's actually a good price for this level of watch. <laughs> Bloody Shiraz. So what have we got here? I mean, he doesn't you? talk. I ask him every time and he doesn't talk. <laughs> Thank you, sir. When are you going to learn? <laughs> Never. Who's the fourth one for? Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> the final one. <laughs> I'd love to see him drink it through the helmet. He needs a straw. <laughs> what a lad. It's the first time I've got it to balance perfectly. The Masks Watchmaker. So this is a Bloody Shiraz Gin. Bloody Negrino. Negrino. <laughs> Do you want to read it? It's <laughs> the fourth time. I'm just going to get whatever's in my teeth. Grown teeth. All right, this is the Bloody Shiraz no, Gin. He's still... The Bloody Negroni. Fifth time lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Using Bloody Shiraz Gin this for a Negroni time. adds a new level of depth and sweetness to the drink. Oh. It it's a, a great entry riches. into the bitter, bittersweet world of Negroni's which watch brand makes the perfect first serious watch? Brilliant question. Which great watch question. brand makes the first, the perfect first serious watch to start someone on their watch journey? That is easy. easy. Oh, easy. Okay. I'm going to try to um, mend some bridges with Judah because it's just so boring, but it's so true. If someone's like, I just need a watch and I may not ever... I may not get it as into it as you are. Just give me one that could last the journey. It is a 58, and I prefer the original that, you know, started the whole 58 journey. So I'm saying a 58. And because people always seem to have the same budget, as in one good watch to start the journey, it's always around five grand in Australian mm -hmm. dollars. So it, it's just done and dusted. It's boring, and I'm being Captain Boring with that response, but that's my answer. And that's not because I need to mend bridges. I actually genuinely have sold hundreds of 58s by saying that. Cool. George, what are you thinking? Starter watches. Aqua Racer. Oh, good call. Um, I, think it's a, it, I think it's a great watch, and I think it's robust enough for your first watch. You can get into a brand for a certain price point, and you can start being loved by a brand. I'd, I'd, I'd say um, that Aqua Racer, I've, I've sold so many of those. With recommendations, with recommendations from me, because it's when you want your first watch. I could easily say an Aquaterra or a Ranger or something, but let's be honest, you want to feel special when it's the first watch. And yeah. Tag Heuer is a household name; it has weight behind it. Yeah, and, it, and there's that sense of achievement. Sense of achievement. It's very well built. It's very easily serviceable. Uh, and it's it, and it, people can recognise it as people well. People recognise it. And there is also the other weird thing is. In the in an exact formula formulation or anything like that or in any way, people go, oh yeah, that's it. And I, I know that. Another yeah. thing that's come out in this season is that Adrian and I both lusted after. Thanks for Pillars. Fake tags. We oh, you yeah. you went there, yeah, but yeah. I badly wanted one and didn't get close enough to Bali to get one. <laughs> um, Let's move on to. We're actually doing quite well for time, um, but now we have six cool. watches that have you got six between cards? us. I do not. I have. Uh, Can we have some more cards? Some more cards, please. please. Here's the first one. Thank you, sir. And I am going I going first again? Bit. Yeah. First underrated watch, and I've been waxing on about this so much. Mm -hmm. Is the engineer. IWC okay. engineer. It should be. I think the vintage one should be up that price. And I. And this is something that you have to beg. I'm begging everyone on on our the people that are subscribing to us and the people that are liking us need to beg. They need to send Instagram messages to IWC and bring this fucking watch back because I love it. <laughs> um, and for me, this is something that I think is the future. It, it's a future classic and the vintage ones, mm -hmm. you think throughout the whole of it, I wore an engineer on one of the days we brought it up a few times. I love the engineer. I, I absolutely 100% behind you on that's that. Just, that's yeah. a boring win. That's a straight up win. Yeah. Great. Next that. one. Okay. Your second underrated watch piece, sir. Underrated watch because I don't. I so th this was my debate because I was just like I can't bring two IWCs. So the one in the Wolf Watchwinder is yeah. is really one of the underrated ones. But but because I can't do the same brand no, in I, my mind. I did, but, no, but yeah. in my mind I okay. can't do it. Tag Heuer V4. Okay. 
So it's a Monaco, but it's the V4. It is one of the... It's a batshit crazy That's movement. Chain. Is that the chain one? Chain, um, and it is, for me, it's still something I haven't brought. I keep on saying I've got mm -hmm. to buy it, but I haven't. This, for me, is if you're... This, this is engineering as a mass market brand to a degree. This is engineering and it should be here. Fight me. I can't argue with that. Mm. I feel that it's rated, if I was honest. I feel that this was, uh, I think, the peak of the avant-garde part of the Tag Heuer journey, where uh, Guy, what's his Guy name? Simon. Uh, Guy Simon was just driving the brand to, and, and Babin at the time, Jean-Christophe Babin, was driving the brand into avant-garde territory. Very niche. I think it was, there's a, I think there's, a reason that it didn't have a long lifespan. I think it, it in itself, it's well, a great achievement. It took two years over when uh, to make it, and there was all the R and D was epic on it. And I think, look, it's a it's a huge achievement, and it's a great flex of Tag's avant garde potential and their their actual uh, ability. But I feel that it's rated. I don't okay. feel, I, and because I feel that it's it's. But I'm not going to win this because he agrees with you. So no, it's, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I have no experience with it, so, so I, I can't. So for me, yeah. underrated, rated. I'm I'm very happy at being rated. I, honestly, no, if Adrian I, doesn't I, agree with, doesn't disagree, then it stays. Where no, it no, does. no. But the thing, the thing, is, the I, thing is, I I showed you something that was the reverso, mm. um, tag Heuer Monaco, and it's the the same era as this, mm. same evolution as this and so for me rated or underrated i'm happy in both camps i really am there wasn't an option here of rated we, we so if you if you said said to me there was an option on rated i would just go it's right. there it has yeah. to be there well it's just to me the reason i love that it, that the monaco v4 has entered the chat is that it is a stark reminder that while it isn't a priority now to necessarily be pushing that avant-garde pushing complications i think tag is still pushing the envelope and oh, some yeah. things the solograph's been been a really interesting watch in terms of the way that there's that and that new diver accumulator this, this, on the, the, the full dial is the solar accumulator all of these twists so they haven't entirely abandoned it but this is a part of the history that i always like it when you bring it back Perfect. cool i like that okay Are you go next or i'll go let me go cool. all right I'll go on this one i'm interested to see you. <clears throat> do you know what i'm really pleased about is that they've agreed with me normally these guys give me shit and this is the first oh, time they've no. agreed with yeah, me George's speeches, so yeah. so honestly <laughs> oh that did not go where i thought it was gonna go Game on. <laughs> ding ding answer <laughs> I feel like I'm the queen in the, uh, the Christmas address because I'm looking straight down the barrel. I'm going to say this. It is very popular to hate Hublot. It is almost impossible to say anything against the tide, the torrent of hatred that this man ferments. I, this I, man's I, up there I, with I, a pitchfork. I, Him and Nico, imagine them both in like, uh, you know, in, I, in like I, a loincloth and a pitchfork. I, 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 it is hype nonsense. This must stop. Ah, oh, stop. I, I, Don't I, I, can uh, I, let me, it is my queen's address. It is my Christmas address. See, the world can't even deal with the truth. <laughs> the world is starting to collapse around us. Before we distract the speaker, George, with, you know, admittedly a very, a very appropriate prop, I want to say a couple of things. Hublot was the first brand to attach a rubber strap to a precious metal case yes. in, as a luxury sports watch. Hublot was the first brand to do a, a sapphire case and sapphire bracelet, now very popular with a lot of luxury brands. Number three... <laughs> <laughs> the respect we have for each other is what happens the show. It is. Um, so, Hublot, did you just send this over to him to put in this? Number three. Thank you very much for letting me finish. <laughs> very popular now for God tier brands, Nico. God tier brands to do coloured ceramic. Done first by Hublot. First, 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 give this brand some respect. You may not like that they have sold some watches. For example, the Classic Fusion. May I have my magazine, please, um, Masked Watchmaker? I am putting my brand where my mouth is on this, which is why everyone's going to say I've trashed it and destroyed the brand forever. The Classic Fusion or Linsky polished ceramic case mm. looks all crinkled. Yeah. An absolute, you know, Marcus shot this watch with me. 
and we both just marveled at the fact that this art piece, this beautiful, beautiful design, so that's that has no parallel. Right. I have no Porsche. <laughs> I, I do not have a Porsche. So, so that... let me finish. Okay. Yes, that has a, a movement that you would not write home about, but it has an absolutely stunning architectural case that would be very nigh on impossible to emulate. For all those reasons, I think Hublot is underrated. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for not interrupting me, not even once. There wasn't even a single moment where you didn't interrupt see, see, me. You get, we, we, we get, get angry. <laughs> we get angry from a comical point. You just get straight angry. He's getting really pissed off with us. Now, gentlemen, <laughs> I'm just going to move on to my second one. Uh, that's no, not no, 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 so, no, 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 no. That Hublot was underrated on any of those points. I'm not sure you even knew those points. No, I, no, no, I, I did. And to correct you from your lazy journalism... Sorry, sorry, you and Nico would be naked. That's how you would correct me. Instead of in loincloths, he'd like to correct me and say we would my be naked video, with our pitchforks. My balls. video was a study upon Hublot to explore why... Your video made. bolsters most of your views. My video... 1.5 million views. That's, it's a, people watch my content. Is he getting angry? About I think he is. No. No, that was jealous. I'm just interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I feel Hublot is sure they, they, they have done some firsts. Um, my, my view and my opinion is always based on regardless of the past, what is the product today? And is that a product that I want? And the answer for me is no. That's subjective entirely. You've got to give a brand and respect. But, but, today, but, 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 but what is that based on? I'm talking about coloured ceramic. This is like five okay, years ago. Okay. But, but then, that's your then subjective I'm going to say it's the, the I'm, importance I'm, of coloured ceramics. No, 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 these correct. are all things that the but, other brands have followed. Wait, 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 wait. Sure, but, but that's, then Richard Mill should be in Racid. Or it should no, be. No one's done a watch like the Pablo Mactanau or the Rafael Nadal. No one else ever could. That's why but, it's... I believe, I do believe, I, I argue that's, that Richard Mill could... I, I think for it to be rated and you pushed it back. No, I said half, half, half. We can't do that. It's an absolutist game. I said Richard Mill should be rated because no one else can do what they do. And in fact, they are the first to have done so, ultralight. So, see, for me, I think Hublot should be rated. They get so much hate. So you think that they're rated correctly as the uh, world's no, most I, hated brand? No, I think they should be rated. And I know this is saying underrated. I think they should be rated. When I... I was it's writing, not what it should be, is it? Or I guess it is. Like it we're is. saying what it should be. I, I think it should be rated. I think as a brand, if I look at it, I agree. They are the foremost. That gold, when I got shown... So the greatest thing was... Magic uh, gold. You know, Unscratchable. Ricardo... Mr. Guadalupe. I'm not sure about that, by the way. I'm not, I'm not, that's not what, my greatest achievement No, no, but Hublot. what... But the other ones I'm going to say is, Mr. Guadalupe, when I was there and I walked around and I was very lucky that I walked around and all these different things. He showed me some of their new materials. This is about two years ago or three years ago. And I went, Jesus fucking Christ. It's a mad the, I mean, like these guys are mad scientists and, I, and, and every morning they wake up and think, how can we build a brand new watch? Yeah. And that's something and that I freaking love. Right. Look, no, no, they but, don't. And, this and is they the thing. don't deserve the shit that they get. And I, I do agree with that. But what I'm, I'm taking the piss out of you in some ways on this is because I am surprised that a journalist would would come into this and say they're underrated. I, I think I'm if we have. for hatred. I'm asking so for, for it. me, but I'm backing I, it up I think it we, should be here. We think we judge brands on their achievements and we but, like to go out there and say then, Rolex first dive watch, Blank Pen first dive watch. We, we, we reel off achievements yeah. and tangible things, but they're achieving, tangible but, firsts, so, and yet it doesn't apply to So if, if they're in there, these have to be in here. Okay. I wanted them to yeah. be there. But, but and, and, and for, for your arguments, I do actually agree with you. Okay. How, because for, for the same purpose of Richard Mill, I agree that the achievements are, are overshadowed by the hype. And this is exactly why, again, I get annoyed with Rolex, because the achievements are overshadowed. Rolex makes fucking good watches at a very affordable price. And I would put if Rolex you buy... here. I don't think they're overrated. I think Rolex is rated. Yeah, cool. Okay, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for, for the arguments that you've put forward, this rem removing the, the hype and the, the, the celebrity around... The, the brand, for, based on the watchmaking ability and the achievements that they've done, I, I agree. But, I'm with you. No, I, I, I agree, but I, I'm not there. I think rated.
So you thought we were going to be killing you. Right, I you just, did. I just wanted to bring we, up a... We absolutely... Yeah, we did. did. We're in support of you. Anyway, I, and, and you show me... You show me a watch YouTube influencer that likes Hublot or will even rate Hublot as a half-decent brand, and, if, and I will show you nobody. Nobody has the nuts to stand up no, and say no, no, that no, these no, achievements no. make the brand worthy of some credibility and integrity because it's so hard to stand against the tide of Adrian's no, and Nico's no, in their, no. their seal loincloths. If you're a watch YouTuber, make a video. With a pitchfork. Make a video yes. saying why, just titled Why I Love Hublot and I'd you will get a shit ton of views. And they'll just all be it. hating you. No, like they won't. there will be in this video. All we need to do is do a thumbnail that says Andrew loves Hublot and this will be our most popular video and I'll be the most hated man on the planet and there'll be not a single fucking person defending me in the comments unless you've got nuts. <laughs> or, and that's not, I don't mean genitalia, I mean that in the sense, unless you are brave. I think we've just wound this up and it's like one of those things that's just going, no, 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 no. Um, yes, 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 yes. And I will tell you yes. why no. this is underrated. Let me tell you why. Everyone misinterprets LUC Chopard as a, as a kind of a, a chintzy dress watch brand. And dress watches are not my thing. LUC Chopard were created by Carl Frederick Sch Chef. Wow, I can never quite say that. KFS. With, with KFS, let's call him that. With, with some very strict objectives. Number one, he wanted at least 70 hours of power reserve, so he needed two barrels. Number two, he wanted Poinçon de Genève. He wanted this to be a to be on a Patek level of finishing, so the Geneva seal. And number three, he wanted a movement that was not manually wound, that did not have a rotor obscuring the beauty of a Poinçon de Genève movement, so he wanted a micro rotor movement. So this is a man who sets out with a mission to do, basically to create the perfect watch. However, what is not known about LUC Chopard is that they have made stunning alpha male chronographs. Mm. In addition to all these office address watches and beautiful chiming watches that win endless GPHG awards, there is an LUC chronograph that will blow your mind. It, it, is, it is maybe the piece that I dream about the most. I love LUC Chopard so much. The one thing I would change, Mr. Um, Carl Frederick Chefwell, we've talked about this together. I continue to beseech you to take Chopard off the name in the same way that Grand Seiko and Seiko having double branding was confusing having LUC Chopard which is LU Chopard Chopard is confusing this should be considered as one of the high-end indies just called LUC this is my dream they're beautiful sapphire dial chiming watches but it's more the chronograph that will blow your oh, mind no, this, that. this one look uh, at yeah. that did you know LUC could do that? No, I, I, I've, I've not I, seen this one. Honestly, no. I'm, I, I do. But this is because I'm, I'm oh. very, very lucky to have gone to. Well, we worked with Chopard doing a watch, but I was very lucky to go there and see. This really is. It's, 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 it, it, you're talking about watch manufacturing to such a beautiful level, and such a and, but not sh shouted about it's almost like and right. they do but everything else gets gets publicity and I think part of the confusion is so that chronograph model was branded chopard now there's luc chopard so they're going through an evolution but i pray that they land on luc as a proud brand in the same but, way that grand seiko's removed seiko just because it's confusing i think with that removed and with this broad collection base of charming complicated pieces beautiful officer case back pieces and then chronographs that cater to people who um, i love that but this is the surprising one people are not going to mm. know that luc does a chronograph like this it is not just unattainable, you, very niche you don't need, charming watches. You don't I'm done. Need, it's yeah. underrated. Done. We, we, I agree. We, we, we agree. We all agree. We agree. Okay. Good shout. Over to Adrian. Your, your last two. I'm last. So um, I, I think this kind of highlights the the, the, the realm that, that we all play in because you guys have gone up and I'm going to bring things down, but to a good level, I'd like to suggest. Genius. So um, my Frank. first underrated watch is the... Christopher Ward C63. Interesting. So the fancy thing around Christopher Ward, and this, I don't like all of their watches because I'm not a massive fan of the name itself, Christopher Ward. And for me, names mean a lot. Like, and you like, have an issue with the logo changes. 
Uh, I, I do until I change the name of my YouTube channel and shit went crazy. And so I, I understand that, that commercially it makes sense to change the name. It don't work. Yeah, fuck me. Yeah. Views went up, shop went crazy. People started listing their Bark and Jack mugs on eBay for, for hundreds of quid. So I should change it to Tide and Time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but for me, and it's similar to if, if people can't afford a, a, a tag as their, their first um, watch, I get them to... My brother's just ordered one of these. Uh, my best mate got one of these. Tell me about uh, the specs. Uh, so it, this is... A, it, it's a very simple watch. Sleater movement powered uh, stainless steel watch. There's not a huge amount to shout about. But the thing that stands out is the build quality. Oh, yeah. And the way that these guys have... Kind of similar to, to, to your story about OUC and, and, and how there's a specification created to come to the product. These guys wanted to build, it sounds so cliched, but high quality watches, they sell them direct to the customer. This is 770 quid. And this wow. is, I'm not shitting you. This is uh, Omega from 10 years ago. Wow. That level. It, it isn't far off Tudor. And if you think of how the watch industry works, a brand will create a watch, they'll sell it to the retailer for about 50% of the price and the retailer will add on their, their, their dealer. So technically, what these guys do, they're very open about it, is they do 3X on their watches. And this is a 700 pound watch. Technically, this would sell a retail shop for 1,400 pounds. And this plays in a ballpark higher than that. You're I'd right. say you'd have to hit 2,000 pounds to get beyond the quality of this you watch. You know, this is, when you explain a brand, this is a, a brand. I want one I, in the room. I, I feel like you're, you've described a strip, strip club to me. It's, it, I, it, it, it is I phenomenal, honestly. They, 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 wanna... they know, they really are, they're an amazing brand and you're totally right. It, and that's where, even my pricing, I have to put in wholesale mm. in my pricing because we've got wholesale. These guys, I, 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 it always baffles me about price until you've just told me. You've just given me the light bulb. Yeah, yeah they're direct to consumer. Yeah. This is the yeah. thing with great micro brands. But Christopher Ward yeah, has, has literally taught everyone about direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. In the watch world, they really One understand. The they're the ones that have supported the British. Um, yep. The Alliance. Uh, the Alliance, uh, the Watch Alliance, and this, is, these guys, they just understand it. Mm -hmm. I would would agree that it's here, but I don't think it's about the single watch. I think as a brand, yeah, the strategies, they, sound. they really are, as a brand, they are underrated. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of kick myself because there is quite a few other micro brands or uh, you know independents but these guys have uh, they're not they're not small they're big no, they're, 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 yeah, they're yeah. powerhouse in uk watch and i'm, I'm really excited to see where they go I when like they're, they're, hand, they're, yeah. they're coming they're, they're wanting to industialize british oh. watchmaking and it's interesting to see jesus christ have you seen their new one that i have i was got? supposed to get hands oh on oh my I, I god get... they've just brought out a brand new watch um i can't remember what it's called and for me i'm just like how, why, when, I mean, like, literally, I, I'm, I'm asking I, I, I think it's multiple already... questions. I want it. So my, 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 my point is, I think Christopher Ward, um, people underestimate, and also sometimes we want to spend money. And that means that uh, you might overlook someone like Christopher Ward and you could be spending double the money, but not necessarily getting double the watch. And, yeah. and so I think Christopher Ward are an awesome shout. Um, are we happy to leave them there? Yeah. Yes. So my second underrated watch is... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a, also, Hublot, that is amazing. The Rolex, I take back everything I said about Adrian. It's a Rolex oh, dear. Explorer 2. And this is my point. Everyone hates it because it's a Rolex. Find me a better watch that... that actually, no, you probably, Find me an awake George Bamford. <laughs> But, uh, but argue, put, put an argument forward to tell me that this is an overrated watch. I believe, I truly believe that the Rolex Explorer 2 is underrated. Can you walk into a boutique and buy one? No, you can't. Well, then it's rated. Can, can, can you walk into a boutique and buy one of these? No. They don't, they're not current stock. This is a current collection piece. You can't say something's underrated if you can't buy it. Nah. Is that a fair argument? Mm, it's a fair point. I don't, my honest thing is... I Logic just, would suggest that makes sense. Because the whole Rolex paradigm shifts this way. Because you can't even buy a freaking Air King, the ugliest Rolex 
Well, apart from the PZR. But, but, but you can't, you can't buy... Richard Mill have a fucking boutique on the most expensive street in London with nothing yeah, in the shop. But they sell vintage out of that, so it, and it's in the back. But, the, the, uh, but, uh, but, but new. I asked the question, can a the, watch you can't buy be the, the, underrated? The, the, that That's sounds... different about Richard Mill, but what? can a watch you can't buy be underrated? Okay, it's so not it's... even accessible. If there's already so many people wanting it and buying it that you can't even get one, it has to be relative to the Rolex paradigm. In that case, I, I still think that's shit. I still think you brought a rated watch. George, I mean, wake up. With that logic, I'd have to change my own thing. No, no, sorry. With that logic, it's an apple. I'm really sorry, but it really is. It's it's it, what the fuck it, is this? it's not on the fucking board. What the fuck is because this? It's Dude, not on the board. It doesn't deserve to be on the board. If his arms are long enough to reach the range of this one, they can't long enough. I'm sorry, it doesn't deserve to be on the board. These are things that what? look at what we've just talked about. This, this. Okay, you know, okay, this. They don't make it anymore. This, they don't make it anymore. So that they, they're disqualified. The whole premise is we're talking about current watches. So this is what we're dealing with right now. Okay. Yeah, okay, I agree with you. I, 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 can, I feel like the exploit <laughs> <laughs> should be back. No, it's definitely not. Because it perfectly... If you take yeah. two of mine off, you can fuck off. I think, I think the range is in Battersea now. <laughs> <laughs> or it might have taken the The, ra the Ranger has been ri driven over by a Ford Ranger. I'm oh, really no. glad. I, I, like... I, this is where we've landed. This, this, this is our view. Kind of a, a diplomatic view, perhaps. Cause no, because you kicked my, my watches yeah. off. Yeah. Half <laughs> <laughs> of your watches are gone. I mean, half of my watches oh, are gone. All right, all right. time out. Let's, let's, no, no, let's... No, no, but, but, no, but, no, George, George. No, time out. <laughs> One of mine's in Battersea. <laughs> let's go to BYOI. Bring yeah, your own independent. Please. And I think we can, we can all that. agree that, that Doctor deserves a bit of a shout-out because oh, they have yes. been Underrated. killing it. The new army... Docs Docs is moving from here to here very quickly. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and rightly so. And what I love about Doxa getting the attention that they are getting is that they have their own design signature. They have you can spot a Doxa from across the road. And their colours and their and design it isn't, it and isn't their... just another standard round no. diver. And that military one, you and I both love have it. a love affair yeah. with Marcus that military. Has that. Marcus has ordered it. I, I mean, when I first saw it, and then I, I, I was just like, this thing. I want. I, I yeah. no the. Weirdest thing is, I went and shook the the designer of it, yeah. and he has now become a friend. But I'm literally shook his hand, and I just went, "You Props are you. fucking cool." Yeah, this um, is gorgeous, and really, it is a gorgeous watch. The case feels good. The whole watch. This is. I, I'm pleased. I'm pleased that Doxa. <laughs> <you> agree on something. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I'm so pleased that you brought this. FKM integrated rubber strap. Great watch. And Love look, it. it's a brand that again you talk about unheralded brands of history. There's just so much history there. You know, there was a year when the, the Doxa booth at Basel was bigger than Rolex. Obviously something didn't quite go right in terms of that race, but there, there is a lot to, to that... uncover when you start getting into it. And the one thing that's cool about Doxa that I will say is that while we talk about that iconic K-shape and that professional orange that's so recognizable, they kind of own orange, which mm -hmm. is a pretty amazing achievement. They're also moving out of that. You know, with the, the, the white pearl and the, yeah. styles, yeah, yeah. and they're, they're actually finding a way to, to, to sort of dress up that one trick pony, or, or at least move on from that. Get a stable of designs. Yeah. No. So can I just get it right? You've just added another one to the board. I just put the BYO on there. Because yeah, I think uh, the no, point no. is that they, they uh, were an so, underrated So he brand. gets another one. I've got two more. Anyway, look, on They're that moving. note, what I want to do is I want to thank our sponsors. So do I. Yeah. Range Rover, Four Pillars, Wolf. Yeah. And and bezel, get bezel shop .get bezel .com. I love how he says that. It yeah. falls out now. You are nailing it. You guys rock. <laughs> guys, <laughs> I, I want to hear your opinions on where we've placed things and which watches do you think are underrated and overrated. Drop a comment down there and check us out on Instagram. And kick the shit out of him. Yes. Bring it on, guys. Jeez. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>